You are listening to KRXN, your home for sexy beats for the background while you are spending a little special time with someone you love, or someone you lust for, or just a little special time with you. Next up, S3X Music by Beat Kitchen. and Trans Real News, reporting to you from a sea cave near Santa Cruz, California. Our apologies to our carrier station. With the irreality released by the destruction of the Ossiflora hive mind, time-space distortions coming from Zyanti, and a gathering of thousands of indigo children, we are seeing the worst of global reality storms that feel like an aftershock of last month's superstorm. It's bad out here on the Pacific coast, and our sources tell us that it is being felt all along the Pacific and Indian Oceans. We managed to find someone's stash here, and may be suffering from a slightly reduced level of professionalism. School! School. Along the fringes of the Neo-Primordial Marsh, the dragonflies are active in song and ritual. Given that they appear to be seeking out Walter Haver Squirrel, we were forced to move as far south as we dared. She wants me for a consort. Do I even dare ask if you... Oh, heavens no. I think that is just an excuse to eat me afterwards. It's not that different from the dating scene all over. Any farther, and we would have run into the vortex around the indigo children, or we would have had to have headed into the Central Valley, which is definitely getting into bat country. In the meantime, we have been receiving reports from Yar and Eorin on the events of the barbarian raids in the Upper Plains. It appears that the Archons have entirely quit the Authority's service. Many are ill or disoriented due to the Televistic Slime. It took the Barbarians very little time to establish that the Authorities have 13 strongholds across five upper plains, and have been storming them systematically. The Authorities have been cornered and captured, one after another. In some cases, the Barbarians are finding themselves in competition with rogue Archons that have turned on the Authorities and have been storming Authority strongholds situated above the Telvistic Mire. For more information on Reality Storms, here is Walter Haver Squirrel with the Time Space Forecast. Listeners, I hope you've managed to find shelter and continue to keep safe in the face of another round of Reality Storms. If you need a review of the contents of a good Reality Storm emergency kit, here is my quick summary. Stripped down because I don't have to please any sponsors. Damn straight! A local magazine or some postcards of Lager landmarks around you in an envelope of quantum-fixed fabric, a computer or smartphone, and access to some webcams. You might want to use something like Hive Telecom servers that will be up if the normal wires are down. You should also have enough bottled water, simple food with less than six ingredients, all of which should be pronounceable, along with a hand-cranked radio, first aid kit, and something valuable to trade like gold, gasoline, bullets, beer, the usual. A standard irreality detector that can actually read up to four according to a consumer market report or product review. And a gun or magic sword, preferably non-cursed. If you don't have one, buy a cheap mall sword and find your local Chaos Magic crowd or Wiccan coven and get them to give it a cheap blessing. It might only last until the nail polish rubs off the blade, but if the nail polish is rubbed off on the ribcage of an attacker, it's worth the cash. Or gold, gasoline, beer, bullets. In the meantime, my Zagug network is only partially operational. But from what I can tell, the storms are not nearly as terrifying as the last superstorm, with Irreality only reaching up around 2.5 quill on global average, although that is still enough to produce new and unfamiliar dangers. Here in Santa Cruz, we are seeing a hell of a lot of vampires hanging out on the boardwalk, and a sudden trend towards pop metal saxophone. 
That's always one thing I hated about Santa Cruz. All the damn vampires. I'm afraid that as we were headed to this location, we saw a family of four transform into Australopithecines and head back up into the trees. When we asked the father of the family, he said that coming down from the trees had been a bad idea in the first place. As we head further along the coast towards Monterey and the Pacific Grove, the presence of indigo children is leading to much higher but relatively less random Moriality warping. It appears that Pacific Grove's waterfront parkland is being converted into some kind of strange living temple of greenery and butterflies. The indigo children, it would appear, have a ceremony of their own planned. I would expect something big to happen along Monterey Bay in coming weeks. Thank you, Toby. I will now play you the latest transmission from our planar war correspondent, Yaron Eorin. I heard we managed to collect heads numbers 11 and 12 in that last raid talk. Just 11. The last two must be holed up in this final stronghold. Then who? This is just a snide cur of an authority's retainer who dared tell me his princess was in another castle. I hate that. Indeed. Intelligence, man! Prove your worth and offer some intelligence. What can you tell me about the tactical situation here? This last fortress is a harder target than most of the others. They were not foolish enough to build on low ground, but the hill they are on is small. That makes the television sludge a liability, and has kept the Archons around here from going crazy. Despite it looking like some chintzy 70s Hollywood pastiche mansion, it is surprisingly well fortified, and their snipers have proven a nuisance. With the doors barricaded, there is no entrance as larger than a microwave oven on the lower floors. It's like a porn studio, opulent, tacky, badly laid out, and optimized for privacy and paranoia. Man, you've been hanging around the 20th century too long. How would you say that compares to the other compounds you've besieged in the last 84 hours or so? It's a challenge. The owner of this one is more paranoid than most, but no less arrogant, and it is about to hurt him. You've got a play to make? I bring the good doctor. Boardmaster Skullcrusher is referring to longtime supporter of the Trans Real News, both before and after the reset, and a major ally of both the Resistance and the Horde, Dr. Fleischmesser of In Minions Incorporated. Good afternoon, Dr. F. Ah, yeah, and my boy. So good to see you. <laughs> Timmy! Nein! No hugs right now. You are too excited. I hope you have a new character rolled up for next time I can host a game. You and Klee had quite a bad time with the dice. To the matter at hand, Doctor. Yes, of course, Lord Master. Here in this birdcage is Specimen Alpha. Where is Specimen Alpha? Timmy? I said I would give you a snack later. Should have expected this. David, send in Beta. Ah, here we are. Specimen Beta. Adorable, is he not? He is derived from genes of a capybara, a hive bar bouncer, a touch of nether parasite, and just a splash of mako shark. It's, um, horrifying. Verily, it is your cutest death machine yet. I call them grazers. This little creature has a metabolism and growth rate that is astounding. I first created them as a proposal for eradicating the Aussie flora hive mind. I am now already breeding a fourth generation, and they feed on the slime. I raise them from little terrorists, specifically from an extract of animal training videos. Will they do what is needed? Oh yes, simply sound the whistle and watch my little grazers climb in every port they have on that horrible mansion and attack anyone and anything that smells of gunpowder or lithium-ion batteries. Once they get truly hungry, they will choose their way back out to get to the slime. When can they be ready? They are ready now. Then they shall lead the charge, and Torg's hammerheads shall follow. Make ready, my warriors. We shall follow the beasts in the charge. They shall root out those snipers and allow us the freedom to batter down the doors. The last of the authorities die tonight. Zakrash! Torque, I, I 
I don't like the look of that turret up top. It looks like it's tracking us. Huh. Then they are staring at the face of death. Torg! Holy shit, Torg, are you okay? Cowards with death brains. Help me up. My left side isn't working. Come on, Torg. Nobody gets to kill you but me. What are you looking at, dogs? Take that tower and bring me the heads of its masters. Let the reporter drag me off to a shaman. Go! Torg's hurt, and I'm gonna pull back. But already the shooting has stopped from within the compound. It looks like the Grazers are doing their job. This is Yaren Yorin, signing off. Well, shit. If he dies, they will bring him back, right? It's against their religion, I'm afraid. Dead is dead. Good thing he is too tough to die. I sure hope so, darling. It looks like Terry is calling us. I... Answer it. This is Clee Maxwell for Transreal News, signing off. I particularly like that last bit. Why don't we do it again? The Transreal News was created, directed, written, and performed by Brian C. Rideout, and produced by Stormhead Productions and is released under a Creative Commons by Attribution non-commercial 4.0 license. This episode of Transreal News included music and sound effects from Pixabay. For show notes or contact information, visit trans-real.stormheadproductions.ca or visit me on Twitter at transrealpod. I love hearing from my audience. If you have comments, questions, or an idea for a news article, please, by all means, drop me a voicemail. Check out my homepage and look for the heading Tell Me What You Think in the sidebar. Then just hit record to tell me what's on your mind. Thank you so much for listening. <laughs>